Welcome to another episode of To The Point, a show graciously hosted by the American Acupuncture Councils. Uh, I'm your host, Virginia Duran, and today we're going to speak about bruising, prevention and treatment. Um, you know, bruising can happen anywhere on the body with acupuncture, but when it happens on the face, that can be more of an issue. And since my specialty is facial rejuvenation acupuncture, um, I'm going to give you some recommendations based on 23 years clinical experience, as well as 20 years of teaching this subject internationally. Um, so let's talk just a little bit about bruising to start. Uh, bruising is generally a normal reaction to a puncture wound as an acupuncture, but it also can be an impact trauma as in the case of an accident. Uh, but there is, uh, you know, excessive bruising that could be a sign of a more serious condition. And that could be low platelet count, uh, a bleeding disorder, even liver disease. Uh, so if anything like that seems apparent, then consult a physician or have your patient do so. Um, so with bruising, what happens is during the healing process, the hemoglobin, which is the iron containing structure that absorbs oxygen, it divides into bilirubin and biliverdin. And this is what causes the black and blue of a bruise to turn kind of a, you know, greenish yellow. And so also with bruising, you can have a little swelling, a bump can occur, that's a hematoma. And we want to minimize all these symptoms and treat them. But best of all, we want to prevent them so we don't have to worry about it at all. So bruises typically last three to seven days. And the size of the bruise depends on the size of the vessel injured and how much blood has leaked out under the local tissue uh, under the skin where the damage occurred. Women tend to bruise more than men because they don't have as dense a collagen matrix as men do. It's not fair, but that's how it is. Um, the face is very vascular, more than other parts of the body in general. And so there's a higher capacity to bruise on the face than there are other parts of the body. Uh, bruising on the face is obviously more visible and less desirable. You know, there could be a little stigma attached to it, like if a woman bruises on the face, around the eyes. Um, and, you know, if someone's not wearing makeup, this is, this is not... a uh, a good thing because the bruises can stay visible for days. Um, but fortunately, bruises on the face heal faster than bruises on the legs. Um, but bruising on the face is not good advertising. I had a patient who had a high propensity for bruising. I asked her to do these recommendations. She wouldn't do it. She'd go back to her office and everybody was like, oh my God, you look so great. What have you done? Da, da, da. But some weeks she would come in with a bruise. And then they're like, oh yeah, I'd really like to do the acupuncture versus surgery or Botox, but I don't want to bruise like you did. She didn't have to bruise. So, you know, like now I can often go through a whole series of treat 12 treatments and not have a person bruise, but I'm going to give you uh, some tips so that it doesn't happen to you because really it's not for the fun for the patient, but it's also not good advertising for you, the practitioner. So spleen deficiency is the uh, Chinese medical term for this tendency for bruising. Uh, there could be accompanying vitamin C deficiency because vitamin C is necessary for collagen synthesis. Certain medications cause more bruising. For example, people on blood thinners tend to bleed, bruise more, although acupuncture is still okay to do. Um, Aspirin kills platelets, so that can uh, make somebody more prone to bruising. And then if somebody takes something like oral or topical steroids, they thin the skin, making somebody more prone to bruising. Even some natural substances, you know, supplements and herbs uh, can do this. So, for example, people taking garlic supplements, probably more of an issue than just ingesting garlic in, in your diet. Natto kinase, the Japanese fermented soybean product, which is so good for uh, keeping the blood moving, but also vitamin E, if people are taking high doses of that, fatty fish oils, uh, certain herbs like ginkgo biloba, but also the aging process and 
sun exposure, the damage from sun exposure makes somebody uh, bruise more easily. So preventing bruising, you know, the first thing you want to do is assess your patients for this tendency. Ask them, have they, you know, do they bruise easily? What medications they're taking? And then, of course, you're doing your HARA tongue pulse diagnosis, however you do those things, and observe their skin. You'll get to know which kinds of skin bruise more easily. And you want to avoid bruise-prone areas. If you see a vessel, obviously you want to avoid it. But on the face, you could consider these points to be highly prone to bruising. Stomach one, chu huo, uh, and bladder one. These are all if you're not very precise. If you're very, very good with it, you're probably okay. But chu huo, if you don't know, is the point uh, about midway between stomach one and the lateral campus. And gallbladder 14 can bruise easily, stomach four can bruise easily, yin tang, and something I call stomach three and a half, which I'll talk about probably in another show. Uh, it's an empirical point that I've come up with uh, for sculpting the cheekbones. Now, you want to have your anti-bruising agents on hand already because speed, you know, time is of the essence. So having them there is going to really minimize the, the times and the length of the bruise and the severity. Now, I'm aware of theories of tonification and dispersal with a quick insertion and a slow removal and vice versa. But for this purpose, I really recommend you remove the needle slowly to minimize the bruising. You can always use your intention for the strategy of tonifying or dispersing, but you'll bruise far less that way. So now, um, for people who have this tendency to bruise easily, I would recommend grapeseed extract. This is not for treating the bruise, it's for that tendency. Uh, so you could take anywhere between 50 to 300 milligrams daily. Most of the research has been done with 150 milligrams and that could be divided into two or three doses for a total of 150 milligrams a day. And you wanna do it starting one or more months ahead. Uh, of the treatment series if you're doing something like facial rejuvenation acupuncture. It's generally well tolerated by almost everyone and it's okay to take long term. The contraindication would be if somebody is taking calcium channel blocker meds. But if you saw the show last time on contraindications to facial rejuvenation acupuncture, you'd know we're not treating people with high blood pressure or people who are taking medications for it, like the calcium channel blockers. Um, so starting the month before, you'd do a series, because what this does is it builds up the collagen on the blood vessel wall so that the blood doesn't seep out of the vessels. Remember that spleen quality of keeping the blood in the vessels? You need that collagen to do that. So that's why uh, this is so valuable for this tendency to bruise uh, very easily. So grapeseed extract. Remember, you know, people would say, oh, wine is so good for you. And I would think, well, who funded that study? It's not that wine is necessary, but wine is made from the whole grape, including the seed. The seed is the jing of the plant. And the uh, skin is where you get resveratrol from, another great anti-aging substance which has some different properties. But anyway, the grapeseed extract contains a lot of very powerful flavonoids, including proamp cyanidins. Cyanidins, that's it, cyanidins. <laughs> and it builds and maintains venous tone. It helps capillary permeability and fragility. It benefits broken blood vessels and varicose veins. It builds the collagen on the blood vessel walls so effectively to lessen this tendency of bruising. And it's a far stronger antioxidant and really great free radical scavenging, uh, averaging effect, you know, more so than vitamin C, E, beta carotene, other, you know, very commonly used antioxidants. So it's reported to be a good cellular preventive agent against DNA oxidative damage. So because you're building up the collagen on the blood vessel walls, it may have an effect on collagen overall. So it may have a little skin firming effect, but I wouldn't overstate that or, or promise that to people. Uh, but some people say that it does seem to make their skin uh, stay a little firmer when they take it long term. 
you can be the judge of that. I don't think the, I think the research is at an early stage with that. But increases superoxide dismutase activity, SOD, if you know that, and stimulates the release of vascular endothelial growth factor, which is part of the, the benefit to this. And it benefits wound healing. And the research they're doing for that tends to be using it topically. But it has a very anti-inflammatory effect. It inhibits and reduces skin tumors. So, you know, promoting tumor cell death and radio protective benefit for the skin. It has some antimicrobial and antiviral effects. You know, I don't want to get into every effect of this because it, it treats multiple systems, but uh, it can help decrease cloasma and it may increase nitric oxide levels in the body, which can cause vasodilation, which has, you know, once you get the circulation in, you know, it carries oxygen and hormones and nutrients and G and everything. So it's really uh, beneficial for most tissues might because of that have a benefit on wrinkles, but again, uh, very um, little research on that at this point. But as I said, it has multiple, you know, more systemic qualities. So it's cardioprotective, it helps vascular insufficiency, it's hepatoprotective, neuroprotective, um, anti-carcinogenic. I've seen things, some research about uh, skin cancer, breast cancer, some other kinds of cancer. It benefits the central nervous system, and has anti-diabetic properties. So how do you prevent bruising? Number one, take the grapeseed extract prophylactically as we've discussed. Then I would recommend a helichrysum italicum hydrosol. Now, if you don't know, hydrosols are the water that's produced, it's like a tisane, when an essential oil is steam distilled um, to when the plant material is steam distilled to make an essential oil rather. So I would spray a cotton ball to prepare the points for needling. So already you have a little anti-bruising agent in the tissue already. Um, apply the helichrysum italicum hydrosol when you're removing the needles to a cotton ball and a Q-tip for when you're removing the intradermals. Now, a really great thing is, um, if you, and you know, it's good to have a little pressure on afterwards when removing just for a few seconds to, you know, encourage the vessels to seal up so they don't bleed and bruise and seep into the tissues. Um, and so what I would recommend is that you, um, once the bleeding has stopped, apply the helichrysum italicum essential oil to the area where the bleeding or hematoma has occurred. But you don't put uh, an essential oil on an open or bleeding wound. You can use a hydrosol, though. Hydrosols are very well tolerated. It's mostly water-soluble molecules. Uh, sometimes there's a little oil-soluble molecules. But so it's very well absorbed, very gentle, can be used on, uh, you know, uh, immunocompromised people, elderly, babies, uh, you know, anybody who's very, very head through, very sensitive skin. Um, and then applying some cold you might want to do, which is going to help uh, to slow the blood flow in the area to kind of contain it a little bit. Um, but you don't want to numb your whole face with an ice pack. So, you know, you'll figure out a way to, you know, apply it to small areas. One way you can do it is to free, you spray it on a, a Q-tip and then freeze it. And then you have ice anti-bruising agent and you can apply a little pressure all in one. And then I recommend taking internally the homeopathic Arnica Montana, or there's blends like Tromiel that contain Arnica and some other homeopathics. Um, but you don't want to take the actual herb Arnica Montana internally. That would be toxic. So just the homeopathic form. And you could take it for four to seven days. You don't want to stop too early because the bruise, you know, it may start to go away and then the bruise can reappear. It's kind of like taking antibiotics for a couple of days for a sore throat. You think it's done and you stop and then it comes back, you know, with a vengeance. So that you uh, want to, you know, just keep, keep doing it for the course of the treatment. Now, remember that hydrosols should be refrigerated and anything, whether a homeopathic 
or something from aromatherapy like an essential oil or a hydrosol. They're very energetic. So don't store them next to your cell phone, your microwave on top of your TV, any of that kind of stuff, right? Um, then I would say, you know, with Hel a, the Helichrysum italicum, it has antimicrobial properties. So some people like to use it on the cotton, the hydrosol on the cotton ball to cleanse the points, but do whatever you need to do in, in wherever you live for clean needle technique. Um, but it has a slight anesthetizing effect, which is uh, another great reason to use it. And it also helps prepare the body so that you already have an anti-bruising agent in the tissues ahead of time. It's very anti-inflammatory. And it's the best essential oil or hydrosol for bruising or hematomas and also for scars. And this is because it has a cicatrisant quality, which is wound healing. So it helps create non young new skin in the area where there's a, a cut or a wound. So um, it's cellular regenerative and it is um, blood moving and enhancing arterial circulation. So some people think of it like uh, something that is like a Yunnan by Yao to minimize bruising and to stop bleeding. So if you're gonna use it for stop bleeding, use the hydrosol, not the essential oil. And then um, it is uh, great for broken capillaries. Um, and you know, it has that blood moving effect. So the broken capillaries are like vascular tracts. So they're just sitting there. And when you get that good arterial blood in there, it kind of flushes them away. But other dermatological uses, you could use it for burns, mild, acne, eczema, cuts, abscesses, but it's not the major, you know, not the strongest oil for those things. Psychospiritually, stress, depression, lethargy, exhaustion, um, but it contains something called beta dions, which helps with both the physical trauma and the psychospiritual trauma. Now, uh, this is just a bibliography in process. Um, but I hope that you will, um, you know, join me for further shows and go to luminousbeauty.com and you can see my workshop schedule, uh, the facial rejuvenation acupuncture instructional DVD series, and I have some articles there you can read and I will see you next time.